Uh, my name is Grant Burns, and I am the Executive Vice President and General Counsel here at AFL. Um, but I'm also a proud board member of the South Carolina uh, Manufacturers Alliance and the State Board for Technical and Comprehensive Education. Uh, so welcome to AFL. Uh, we're, we're glad to have you here today. Uh, a little bit about us. We are a fiber optic uh, manufacturer. Uh, we have uh, really manufacturing all over the world, but we have eight um, places and the headquarters right here in South Carolina and right here in Duncan actually is where the headquarters is, where you are today. We have about 6,000 employees around the world. 1,300 of them are here in Spartanburg County. Um, so we're proud, proud to be here and uh, really, glad to, really glad to host today. Um, what makes us, AFL, and other manufacturers across the state successful is the, uh, the skilled and talented workforce that we have and uh, that we try to develop and that we, um, and that we try to retain as well. Uh, as we look to the future, a strong pipeline of people who are uh, able and educated uh, to fill high demand careers uh, will uh, ensure that South Carolina continues to be uh, not only a great place to, to work, but a great place to call home. So we're excited uh, to be here, and Governor, we're, we're glad to hear your remarks today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. This is a, thank you. <laughs> we, we've got a lot to say. This is a great place to say it, and we appreciate the invitation to be here very much. We look forward to being back. Uh, as we know, the pandemic has disrupted everything. It's historic disruptions of commerce and trade around the country and around the world. But we are also now, we have opportunities. Since we did not close down, we slowed down. We didn't close down. We're ready to blast off while a lot of other states and a lot of other countries are having to dig out. What we want to do today is we want to empower our employers, to empower our people to get to work. And the centerpiece of this is going to be our technical college system, which is the best in the world. It's mature with 16 different technical colleges. We have uh, those disruptions, and we are booming as I mentioned, and jobs are plentiful. We know we have a lot of jobs out there, but employees are, sc are scarce. So we are going to fill those jobs. We have people who want to go to work, but because of disruptions, a lot of people did not go back to work. Where are they? They're still out there. Well, we're going to put them back to work, and we're going to put them back to work in good, high-paying jobs that are determined by the demand that is felt by the manufacturers by the employers. This is a unique approach to what we do. And we gave it a, had a test, a pilot program with $12 million from the CARES Act, which you remember was called the, the GEARS Fund. And with that, we provided funding for people to go to our technical colleges for certificates and training, short-term programs, and they worked marvelously well. We had over 3,000 students take advantage of that. Where did they go? I'll read you the numbers. 485 nursing assistants went through that program in just a few weeks. 283 commercial truck drivers, 253 emergency medical technicians, 239 welders, 235 phlebotomists, 177 people received IT certifications, 130 received South Carolina manufacturing certifications, 79 were certified as forklift operators, and 61 were certified as heavy equipment operators, and there were more. By the end of this year, we expect to have 5,000 people in South Carolina who have participated in those short-term programs. It works so well, what are we going to do? We're going to double and triple down and do it again, but do it better and do it for longer terms and include in their associate degrees, which are awarded in our technical college system. And that is, that is the key that opens the door to the future, not only of our people, but as well, our state as well. So I'm proposing that we invest our legislature 
invest $124 million from the American Rescue Plan Act, known as ARPA, into this program, which will last for two years. That ought to provide these degrees, certificates, associate degrees for 15,000 people. This is a more extended program. If this works, and we know it will, and we'll know what to do next. And to get it started, I've got $17 million left in the GEARS Fund. I'm putting that in there today. So Dr. Miller, you can get started. With Tim Hardy, you can get, you can get started. And that's what I came to say. This is, a, this is a collaborative effort. This is, I don't know of any place in the country that, where this has been done or where it's been proposed because the employers will be able to hire somebody for one of these jobs and then send them at no cost to receive the training that the employers determine is what's needed. And the Department of Employment and Workforce will be working, matching up those people who are filing unemployment claims with these jobs, with these employers. Every time we communicate, collaborate, and cooperate, use our heads, and call on the assets that we have, South Carolina wins. And that's what we're going to do today. Thank you. Obviously, I'd like to start with thanking the governor. Uh, he has decided to have confidence in the South Carolina Technical College system, what we do each and every day, and we plan to deliver this trained and skilled workforce in the coming months through our technical college system. We are in the workforce development business with the South Carolina Technical College system. There are shortages right now, as the governor mentioned, across the state. Our plan with this initiative is to roll out across the state at all 16 technical colleges the opportunity which is really transformative for us as a state to offer to people an opportunity to come and gain credentials, certificates, degrees and diplomas, some short term, some as long as the associate degrees that the governor mentioned. This will start in January. Uh, to give you some examples, these will be in fields like healthcare, IT, manufacturing, construction. We see this as an opportunity for South Carolina citizens to move forward and have training immediately. Our colleges are ready to go to work and put this in place. Uh, after today, we're having a nice announcement and the governor's committed to the South Carolina Technical College system, but I also wanted to take an opportunity those of you that are here today, the, the presidents of our 16 technical colleges are representing the college. Would you just raise your hand for a minute? Because that's the folks that will make this work after today. I also want to mention today, uh, in my job, I have a lot of opportunity to talk with folks that are we appreciate what the technical college system, I see right in front of me, Thornton Kirby with the Hospital Association. Uh, I have I talk with him uh, every, every few months and he says, we appreciate those 1,100 nurses a year that you're producing, but talk to me about how do we get some more? And Rick Todd with the Trucking Association, Tim, I appreciate the CDL and everything that's happening there, how do we get some more? Uh, Henry Lewis is right here with the EMS Association of South Carolina. Uh, we need hundreds of EMS workers across the state of South Carolina. This is what we're here today for. This is what enables us to move from we need until we have. And our technical college system is poised to do just that. Uh, I know the governor, and I appreciate several members of the legislature being here, a lot of times the governor has to make decisions about what you invest in in South Carolina. Uh, many times we make the decision as a state to invest in roads. Sometimes we invest in water and sewer. Sometimes we invest in broadband. Today is a bit different in that what we're investing in is the people of South Carolina. We're investing in the people in such a way that we enable them to have opportunity through our technical college system. I would, uh, I thought it was interesting, I was coming up here, uh, coming down 85 and uh, passed by the Michelin facility that 40 years ago the technical college system worked with, with Red ESC. And we still work with them 40 years later and they're part of our tire manufacturing community that pr produces 102,000 tires a day in the state of South Carolina. A little farther down I passed BMW 
25 years ago, we started working with BMW. Today, they're producing 450,000 BMWs a year. Uh, at the exit, uh, the Tiger Center for Spartanburg Community College for uh, Dr. Makoto was here. All that to come here today at AFL and appreciate their uh, hospitality and having us, but this is the next step for the technical college system, for us to be able to provide this for the citizens of the state. Uh, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Sarah Hazard and appreciate the fact that just like those others I mentioned, uh, she also reaches out to me and says, uh, appreciate everything you're doing, but we need some talented people in manufacturing. So Sarah, I'll turn it to you. Thank you, Dr. Hardy. As you said, my name is Sarah Hazard and I'm President and CEO of the South Carolina Manufacturers Alliance. SEMA is a statewide trade association that is the voice for South Carolina manufacturers. You know, we work every day to make sure that South Carolina is one of the best states for manufacturers to do business. And we wanna make sure that our industry continues to be successful and prosperous for many years to come into the future. The Palmetto State is a manufacturing state. To give you an idea of what manufacturing means for South Carolina, I wanted to share a few facts with you about our industry. Manufacturing has a $206 billion annual economic impact in our state. South Carolina is home to more than 6,000 manufacturing facilities that are currently operating here. The industry employs close to the 300,000 South Carolinians across all of our 46 counties. This makes up over 12% of our state's workforce. And then if you factor in the full scope of occupations that are generated by the industry, it actually employs 30% of our state's workforce. And today we know that there are literally thousands of manufacturing jobs that are available throughout our state. I can confidently say that the success of any manufacturer starts with its workforce. And in today's tight labor market, if you have the right credentials and skills, opportunities for careers are readily available. That's why we are excited to be part of today's launch of the Workforce Scholarships for the Future program. You know, we are blessed to have such a great presence of technical colleges throughout South Carolina. Our technical colleges have an incredible track record of performance in providing educational and tra training opportunities for students who go on to work in some of the most important career fields. Their strong presence and record of success are some of the main reasons that we have such a diversified and high-tech manufacturing industry in our state, where we make everything from cars to tires to fiber optic products here at AFL to airplanes and to so much more. You know, individuals who complete programs that are related to manufacturing, such as maintenance, mechatronics, machining, welding, and other high-demand fields can have a future professional growth and access to career opportunities with some of the most innovative companies in the world that are located right here in South Carolina. And that's the same with so many other companies in other industries across our state, such as healthcare, transportation and logistics, construction, IT. If you are skilled and have the education necessary to work in those careers, it can truly change someone's life for the better. It's exciting for South Carolina to have a Workforce Scholarships for the Future program because this is gonna help alleviate financial barriers for individuals who can go on to fill some of South Carolina's most important and high demand careers. So, you know, Government Master and, and, and Dr. Hardy, you know, at SMA, we just wanna thank you for your leadership in launching this important initiative. SEMA is committed to making sure that it is successful and collaborating with you to recruit students to these programs through our South Carolina Future Makers Workforce Development Initiative. This effort is gonna make a positive impact for South Carolinians. It will help strengthen our pipeline of skilled individuals in high demand career fields throughout the Palmetto State. And it's gonna be critical for our state's future success because what South Carolina makes, makes South Carolina. So thank you for the opportunity to be here today and we are very, very excited about, about this initiative. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Grant. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you, Sarah. Um, we strongly believe that our technical colleges deliver some of the best programs that can lead to success and meaningful careers for so many people in our state. 
Um, we are so excited to launch the Workforce Scholarships for the Future program, Governor, and I look forward to seeing its impact truly benefit our state's citizens and their future. Uh, thanks for joining us today, and uh, Governor, I think uh, you have some time for Q and A. Sure. Okay. I just would like to just say again, this is we couldn't be doing this in our state if we didn't have the best technical college system in the whole world. It's already set up. It's already working, and we know that the people of the state are the kind of people that employers look for all over the world. So all we need to do is educate them and train them. Everybody wants to be in South Carolina. And this program is targeted, and it's unique in that it is targeted to these high demand jobs, which have, have really come, come forward during the pandemic. We've learned a lot. And it is targeted by the manufacturers, by the businesses, by the companies themselves, but what they need. They will tell us what they need, and then we, the technical college system, will provide it. It is a wonderful plan. It is unique, and I'm confident it's going to work. Does anybody have a question? Joe? Governor, uh, part of the proposal includes voluntary requirements or work requirements. Can you say, say it again? Part of your some of the notes here include uh, 100 hours of voluntary time at a nonprofit, or being employed while doing the work. Why include those requirements? Those are, those, are good, those are good requirements because this is a program that is at no cost to the participants. It's not means based and it's at no cost. It will be based on, of course, there's, there's a, a limit to how many people can come into it, but we, it will, uh, this is a pilot program for two years. And that is the way to set up for it to work the best, because it's, it's no cost to the participants. You ruled out about a billion dollars worth of recommendations out of the money so far. How close will the rest of your recommendations follow what Accelerate SC? Um, we are still studying those. As you, some of you remember, when the pandemic came, we set up a group called Accelerate SC, uh, made up of people from uh, all across the state in different lines of work. Uh, in Endeavor, and they gave great recommendations, which we followed. Uh, and we've used that organization again, that group, to provide recommendations on on what we want to recommend to the to the General Assembly. Much of the leadership is of which is here today. So we are still studying those, but you know we've, we've made some decisions on on uh, on highways, and and this is another this and water and sewer half a billion dollars for that. And this is another step. We, we being careful, moving cautiously, just as we have throughout this. Any more questions? Anybody got a good idea that we haven't thought of? <laughs> well, keep on thinking, because uh, they'll be coming. You know, this is this is really a great a great collaboration, a South Carolina collaboration. Thank you very much.